What's up everyone? In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to change the opacity of a material or object in the sequencer in Unreal Engine. So I've just set up a very simple scene here just for the demonstration of this material or this function. Now we have a very simple sequencer set up. Now what makes this unique is that it acts differently to the visibility of the actor inside the sequencer. So let me just demonstrate that for you. So I'll just delete this from the sequencer and I'll add, I'll add the actor to the sequence, which is SM couch. And as you can see here, there's no option here to change the opacity. If we click the track button and then we click on actor hidden in game, there's an option here that'll make the object appear or disappear inside the sequencer. So if we just add a keyframe by, by clicking this button just here, and then further on down the track, say 30 frames in, we add another keyframe, and then we uncheck this box here. You will see that once it reaches frame 30, the object will disappear. Now, the difference between this and the method that I will be showing you in this tutorial is that you can see the material fade over time. I recently worked on a project where there was a scene set up with a camera approaching a house. And as the camera got closer, the wall started to fade until it completely disappeared. And then the camera stopped inside the house and that stayed as the backdrop of the client or stayed as the backdrop for the client. So one of the first things that we need to do to achieve this is to first set up something called a material parameter collection. So if we just click on the content folder, we'll just set up a new folder in here and we'll just call this material, material parameter, double click on that. And if we just right click over here, or we can use the add button just up here, we'll just right click. And then under the material tab, you will see something called material parameter collection. So we'll just click on that and we'll just give this one a name. We can call this one opacity controller. And then we can double click on that. And this is the page that you will see. So this setting this one up is extremely simple. So just under scalar parameters, just click on the plus icon. Okay. And then on the left here, just expand index. The default value, set that to one. And then change the name to opacity. Okay, once that's done, you can click save and you can close that. Now, the second thing to do is to set up the material itself. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the starter content. We'll click on props and let's just use this chair as an example. So if we just drag this into the scene, we'll just rotate it this way so it's more visible. Now on the right hand side, you can see in the details panel, you can see that the material of this chair is listed just here. If we click on the folder icon, it'll take us to that material. If we double click on that, we can see that there's a whole bunch of nodes that make this material. So we don't have to worry about any of this at the moment, or even for the sake of this tutorial, we won't be touching or fiddling with any of this. So we're going to do a complete new setup. So just drag this over to the right as far as you need to and zoom in just using the scroll wheel to do that. And then we are good to start. So the first thing to do would be to actually duplicate this material. So we don't want to make any changes to the material itself. So we would want to duplicate this so you can highlight it and press control D to duplicate or you can right click on the material and then click on duplicate. Okay, so just for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna call this one M chair fade, press enter. Double click on the new material. Okay, and just zoom out a little bit so you have a bit of room to work with. So the very first thing that we will need is a node called dither temporal AA. 
So if we just right click on a blank spot here on the screen, it'll bring up the search menu and just type in the word Deva and select that node. The other node that we would need is something called a collection parameter. So if we just type in collection or collect, this node will come up. We would also need a multiply parameter. So in order to do that, you can just right click and search multiply. And it'll be this one just here. Or you can hold the letter M for multiply and then left click on the screen and it'll bring up the multiply node. The last node that we would need is a constant. So in order to do that, you can hold the number one and then left click on the screen, or you can right click and search the word constant. And it's just that one there. So now that you have everything that you need, the very first thing to do is to convert this constant into a parameter. So you can just right click on that, select convert to parameter, and just give this one a name, opacity, and set the default value to one. Now, once you've done that, you can click on this collection parameter. And this is where that material parameter collection will come into play. So once you click on that over here in the details panel, you'll see on the left collection. Click on the drop down menu and select the new opacity controller that we just set up earlier. Once you've done that, click on the drop down next to parameter name, select opacity. Once you've done that, you'd want to plug this into the alpha threshold of the dither node. And then you'll connect the result of that into the A pin of the multiply node. Once you've done that, you can connect the collection parameter into pin B of the multiply node. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is to connect the multiply node into the opacity mask pin. And as you can see, it's actually faded. That means it doesn't work. It's not working at the moment. So there's actually one more thing that we need to do. So if we select the M chair fade node on the left hand side here, you'll see something called blend mode. Just click the drop down menu next to that and click on mask. And that's pretty much it. So now when you click save, that should apply everything. We'll just wait for that to load. We can close this window now. Make sure that you have the chair selected and you also have the new material where you just made the changes selected. And then just over here on the right hand side, you just click this little arrow. Now what that will do is apply the selected material onto this object. So if we just click on that, as you can see, not a single thing has changed, but that's okay because all of the changes will actually be reflected in the sequencer. So what we need to do now is add a new track and then you will need to click on material parameter collection track and select the new material parameter collection that we set up. Once that's there, click the plus icon and select opacity. And you can just expand this one here by clicking that little arrow and you'll see that the value of this object is set to one. Now, if we decrease that, you will see the object start to fade depending on the opacity of the object. So in order to actually make the most use of this is you'd want the object to fade over time. So set up a keyframe. I'll just delete this keyframe for now. Now in your sequence of timeline, add a new keyframe and let's go maybe, let's say you want it to fade over three seconds. Let's just select 90, 90 frames at 30 frames a second. And we will set a new keyframe over here. And then we can set this value to zero. So now what you'll see is once we hit play over three seconds, this chair should start to fade slowly. Now, of course, the further away that you drag these keyframes, you will see that it will start to fade even slower. 
And that's pretty much it. So if you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.